We're talking today with Jim Leet of Grand Haven, Michigan, and the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, Jim, start us off with some background, and to begin with, where and when were you born? I was born in Manistee, 1930. Yeah. Did you grow up there or move around? Pardon me? Did you grow up in Manistee or did yes, you move around? Yes, I okay. grew up in Manistee. And, uh, what did your family do for a living when you were a kid? Uh, I, you can guess. Uh, my mother was widowed mm -hmm. or divorced, mm -hmm. and uh, I, we lived with my grandmother and her father. Mm -hmm. And uh, graduated from Manistee High in 1947. And, uh, okay. and before we move forward, um, what was life like uh, during World War II uh, in Manistee? I mean, what ways were you kind of aware of the war and its effects? Not really, not really. Was there... I, was, I was a sophomore in, in uh, high school then. Mm -hmm. I mean, was there rationing in place and, and that kind oh, of thing? Yes, yes, but I... With the parents that were there, uh, they took care of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, but uh, from my point of view, it didn't. It was not critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so then, um, so when did you grad? You graduated from high school then. You said in '47. Yes. Okay. And uh, what did you do after you got out of high school? I started working. For my stepdad dad, doing carpenter work, mm -hmm. everything from putting roofing and, and uh, finished carpeting. Uh, the winter, the first winter was kind of slow working. It was just the two of us, mm -hmm. sometimes three, but uh, we survived and worked greatly through, through the, the summer, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I started to wake up a little bit and I said, I just don't want to go through another wait and see in, in the winter again. So I decided to uh, join the service. Mm -hmm. I went down the Navy. And there was a three months waiting list. And I said, well, that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Air Force wanted two, two, two months. And I said, I can't wait that long. I said, go upstairs. So I went upstairs and the Army, they said, I want to join. He said, raise your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> two days later, I was, out. I was gone. All right. Where did they send you for basic training? Fort Knox. Okay, uh, and what was, what did Fort Knox look like to you, or what kind of facilities were you in? Well, it looked great. Uh, the built the uh, barracks were fairly new, probably built in World War II. Right, and uh, everything looked great. Now, how did they treat you when you got there? Uh, probably a little strictly. <laughs> the first first night there in the barracks, lights out nine nine fifteen. Somebody ran the full length of up the second floor, which is just above the heating ventilator. Mm -hmm. Very sunny. And uh, ten minutes later, we were all up, uh, bundled up, and they had one was Agney Hill, and the other one was similar. That's the only time I really got disciplined. You know, but the, the whole barracks was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, it, it was. It, it uh, settled in, you know, mm -hmm. and he didn't try it again. 
Okay. So you said Agony Hill? Yeah. Is that something you had, they made you run up and down, or? Yeah, there, there was just normal hills. Mm-hmm. In, at night, you, you feel the guy ahead of you. Mm -hmm. oh, so they actually took you out of the barracks at night and made you run? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and then what else, what, what did they actually teach you in basic? I mean, well, just it's, it's basic, basic needs. Uh, how to shoot, rifle. Dismantled and I didn't. Uh, we only had eight weeks of basic. Mm -hmm. Went down from the 13, 13, and uh, yeah, of course, you know, war was over, so it was necessary uh, to dismantle the rifle. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and they would teach you to follow orders, right? Oh yes, <laughs> very much so. Okay. Now, was it easy for you to adjust to that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, were there some other guys who were having more trouble than you were? The only one I know of was well, uh, was dealing with the Red Cross. His mother or father supposedly was dying, mm -hmm. and he could get the uh, Dominos connected. And, uh, he went AWOL. Uh, of course, I didn't see him again. Mm -hmm. Okay, but all right. Uh, but basically, yeah. otherwise, everybody everybody was getting through that fairly, mm -hmm. uh, fairly well. Well, there was, we had one fellow, uh, a, a farm boy. I'm assuming very much. Mm -hmm. He could not keep step with everybody or anybody mm -hmm. else. It's almost just that one head bobbled up, <laughs> but it took longer strides. It took a three-foot stride. Mm -hmm. okay. now, uh, uh, now, you're there, and, and this is 1948 now. Uh, officially, the military was becoming integrated. Yeah. Were there any black recruits in your training unit? Yeah. Uh, no. Not that I... No, I don't think there were. Okay. Um, but when I moved to Oakland Army Base, then we got uh, a few. Well, it's only one that I really remember. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had probably a, maybe a platoon. No, no, not a platoon. A uh, squad, at least, of uh, uh, Filipinos mm -hmm. who. Uh, survived the, the war. Okay. All right. Uh, so we kind of go back. So, so Fort Knox was basically kind of standard marching, drilling, shooting uh, yeah. for eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then what did they do with you after that? Did you go to, was it? Was that? They, didn't, they didn't ask me mm -hmm. until I got on the train. Okay. That uh, they said, you want to do ship's fitting or, or carpentry? But that was after I was designated ship's fitter. Okay. And uh, that's just ship carpentry. I know something about it. And uh, now, did you get training? Let's see. Was Fort Eustis, Virginia, your next stop then? Yes. Okay. All right. And there you were training to be a, a ship fitter. To start with, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Ship's carpentry was, we learned to plug holes in PT boats. All right. Uh, now, was this just a training assignment there? Yes. Okay, and how long did that last? Uh, I think it's supposed to be four weeks altogether. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so, so not very long. No, no. They, would have, they could have called it. The first week, and still had five days left. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for, just, for me, mm -hmm. some guys n never did get to be able to do it. Okay, well, when they were training you, I mean, would you actually work on the hulls of PT boats? No, no, no just 
piece of plywood. Okay. So you're just patching holes in plywood? Mm-hmm. What do you patch a hole with? Plywood. Okay. Yeah. And how do you seal it? Well, <clears throat> they show you what it looks like. And all you have to do is make one similar. Okay. If there's a hole here, you make a, you make a hole bigger. And if, if you're on the outside, it's figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. you chamfer all the way around. So it's bigger on the outside than the inside. Mm -hmm. And then you, you do one or the other first, then uh, either the hole in the boat or the, or the plug. Mm -hmm. And plug would be just the opposite. To fit it in the best you can and uh, be a, another larger plate and fasten on it from the inside. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Now, while you were there, uh, did you get to go off the base at all or look around anywhere? Not really. Okay. We, the option was there, but I, I didn't take it. I'm going to Galesburg. Mm -hmm. But I guess going as far as, say, Washington or Richmond or something like that was not really an option. No. Okay. All right. Uh, so now you've had your, your training exercise there. Uh, where do they send you now for regular duty? Oakland Army Base, California. Okay. And how did they get you to Oakland? Training. Okay. And how long did that take? <laughs> I don't know who, who remembers. <laughs> Well, do you remember if you had to just sit around a lot and stop and wait for trains to go by, or you got to roll pretty much straight through? Well, if you were on a train, half the time it was on at night, you didn't pay any attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess in, some, in the World War II era, there was often a problem because there were so many trains going back and forth, and troop trains sometimes went off to the side. Uh, mm -hmm. This is peacetime, and maybe they're integrating you better into the regular schedule, and it's like being on well, a passenger train. Oh, well, the demand was that's that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Uh, and now, once you got to Oakland, what did you wind up doing? Uh, first shore was in the uh, warehouse, receiving stuff that uh, virtually useless but the stuff that re returned from overseas. Okay. Old games or whatever. And uh, if I may go back mm -hmm. for the uses, the first or second night I was there, in the barracks at night, <coughs> we had a little fire. The warehouses were next to the water, you know, and they're a quarter, quarter of a mile long. And uh, one end was OPX supplies, <laughs> which was which burned. Mm -hmm. And was uh, it didn't really affect us, except. There were, yes, it did. We had fire duty <laughs> for quite a length of time mm -hmm. until we shipped out. But uh, there was not much of a need for purchasing cigarettes. <laughs> mm -hmm. They survived. But, uh, yeah, then going back to the warehouse stuff and the uh, you think we were needy, <laughs> but uh, that was the intent. Uh, the powers that be and uh, decided they were going to patrol the California coast mm -hmm. with PT boats. Okay, that's why we were there. All right, and. Uh, It's like I said, I didn't materialize so much, but more time in warehouses <laughs> until I 
heard that uh, they were in need of a mail clerk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I held that. Well, I went, went home in detail. I get this straight. Uh, well, um, you, you were, I guess, um, so you were at your, your mail clerk there, um, Oakland Army Base, and initially that's, that's still peacetime. Um, did you get a chance to kind of go I into town in Oakland or over to San Francisco? Or? Mm. We went to Frisco once, just my buddy brought his car back. Mm -hmm. So there was three of us. We jumped in there, crossed the bridge, and first turned off the main road. He turned right, one way the wrong way. <laughs> so he turned left, <laughs> wrong, wrong way again. <laughs> Two more turns, says, we turned around and come back. But, uh, Oh, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I stayed there, and it's the only time I spent time uh, Catholic organization. I had girls come over for mm -hmm. dancing and it went not serious, but lengthily. When I, when I came home on furlough, and uh, it was a good break because mm -hmm. <laughs> I never went back. And uh, I was home, and as all my friends were either in college or working. Got kind of boring. So my grandmother mentioned something about a roof. I said, Yeah, hey, that sounds great. So she ordered the roofing and uh, I started on it. It's an old four gable house. Mm -hmm. I started the valley. And I covered an area about the size of this table. Of course, you know pattern. Mm -hmm. And the <clears throat> I heard a voice from down below with a bicycle and he's, he said, hey, are you a gym lead? And I said, yes, telegram. And that was a telegram that they gave me four days to get to four uses. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I reported with a tele it with a telegram in submitted clothes, and they didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> they found something to do with me. <laughs> okay. uh, now to back up now, um, this when was this? Was this now summer of 1950? July or so? No, 51. 51. Okay. Um, all right. I guess you you had an itinerary or some notes written down in places and the documents you had, and it looked like 1950 was when yeah. that started and when you got that message right. to go to Fort Eustis. So, because uh, the Korean War starts mm -hmm. in June of 1950. Okay. Do you remember hearing about that at the yes. time? Okay. Yes. And did it occur to you that you might get involved in that? Not really. I see. I was home on, on furlough then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so Uncle well, Sam found you. Yeah, yeah, they, they found me. All right. So uh, now, okay, you've been called to Fort Eustace. Uh, so what did they do with you after you got there? Not enough, not much, except shuffle me around. They, they 
gave me a full duffel bag and uh, I think it was probably the next day that it happened that night naturally <laughs> and the, the organ supposedly organized groups mm -hmm. and uh, I say I was I was in one one unit long enough to set my bag down and pick it up again, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and you had no idea where you were, and uh, finally things settled down. You know, and holler out company A or whatever. Uh, it, although. They had to follow somebody and uh, went down the train station, went down to the trucks, and took the trucks over to Fort Lee which, and uh, trained from their uh, northern route. I'd already been on the southern route. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so this is across the country? Right. Okay. To Seattle. And uh, I don't remember going on land freely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I think we, I say, I really think that we went directly to the boat. Mm -hmm. On the way. Okay. Were you in a unit now? Had they yes. formed? It? Okay. Yes. So what unit were you in? Seven Fourteenths. ROB. Okay, so this says 12. That's a 712, but that one's wrong? Not entirely. Okay, all right. But basically, it's a railroad transportation battalion now that you've been assigned to. Uh, and where are they sending you to? Well, I think they're planning to do whatever where we're going. <laughs> but uh, we left there, and uh, the first day out was a little rough. And, uh, but uh, we landed in Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think we may have stopped in, in uh, Hawaii, but uh, not to stay. And uh, we didn't get off the ship. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> went from there, we went into Japan. And nobody got off the ship there, but we we left a few, maybe a platoon, I don't know, whatever, there and picked up some more troops. And then we went to Busan. Okay. Uh, and, and when did you get to Busan? The next day. Okay. But I mean, in terms of calendar, do uh, you know roughly when you actually land in I think you've got that in your notes. It's, uh, the beginning of August now, or 50? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So at that point, and then did you know anything about the situation in Korea when you got there? No. Okay. Uh, so when you get there and you get off the boat, uh, now what happens to you? Well, this is... <clears throat> the end, probably the, near the end of June. And uh, we, we were the you know, outfit we were in, and so we got off the boat, and uh, vehicle traffic up to uh, Busan Hotel, Busan Railway mm -hmm. Hotel, and that's where we stayed just for a while. And, uh, First information was at that point there was just a few of us, and uh, this was during the Busan perimeter. Right. And when we oh on the boat, we woke up, got up, and thick. Fog. You couldn't see from one end of the ship to the other. 
but it, it gradually came up. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, there's another ship. There's another one. Mm -hmm. During the course of an hour or two, there was hundreds of them out there. I found out later some were full and some were empty. To get, whether they're going to disband or surge. Okay, so they could potentially be there to evacuate people. Um, and that's sort of what the extra ships were for. I, I think that was determined like maybe the, the same day or the next day. Because uh, they, from there, then we, we met our, <coughs> uh, the Korean railroad people. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of all the names, it's Colonel Lee. <laughs> but uh, says the room was like this. Uh, it's an imaginary line down the middle. It's the Koreans' operations, and this is yours. And uh, this was fine. That worked out real good. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, We had to keep, well, we were instructed on what to do, and uh, it was to get myself and somebody else at one station over here, and they had the same setup. <clears throat> and what we did, uh, the trains originate in the, uh, the yards. Mm -hmm. At that point, actually, the end. Uh, and uh, we would get the information, the train number, and when it would leave. And uh, <coughs> somehow we had to know where, where it was headed. It was a double track up through all the way to Seoul. Mm -hmm. A single track on the East Coast went to Yongdong or someplace. Okay. And uh, I still haven't figured out how they operated that train. Trains going across. Sightings. And uh, so we just, and then we monitored uh, them going up the, the next station up, we we'll monitor. And they were just about five miles apart. And there was only uh, probably four or five stations active at that time. And uh, they would say, uh, trade number such, such and such, uh, buy at 0235 or arrived mm -hmm. and then they'd give you a departure. And they kept track of them. Because okay. they had a nature, the Koreans had a nature of slowing down and passing off the coal and things. Mm -hmm. so. so you would keep track of how long it took them to get from one place to the next and you could figure right. out how fast they were going? Mm -hmm. They would get on the grids and say, hey. <laughs> Right. Now, how did you communicate with each other? If you're on the rail line someplace, did you were you using radio or telephone or wireless or? Well, it was a, a field radio system. Okay. Which the Koreans like the, the copper wire and <laughs> and the members. And, well, up until now, I. Like, Remember the sergeant's name of it, who came in and shake with us. Was run, run no cable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you tried to run telephone cable or something like that, people would steal it. Yeah. Okay. But they, if you have, they'd probably sell it back to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, what? So were you based, so you were not yourself then based in Pusan, you would be out someplace else along the railroad, or would you normally be in Pusan? Uh, the main stations, I, I never left. 
Okay. When I got as far as uh, Tegu, mm -hmm. uh, I moved up there. Okay. And then went over to the hand dog on the east side, then back up to Teja. But I, the first winter, I was in I think I was in Teja. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. It seems like I was in hand dog, but uh, I didn't sleep for two weeks, so. Went to the Swedish hospital. <laughs> okay. And uh, they put me by a uh, pot stove. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember anything until I woke up around supper time. I got there in the morning, late morning. And uh, hungry. It was almost too late. <laughs> well, that was, didn't have any little stack machines or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, I survived. But I, they, they tried, they said they, they did everything but bounced me on the floor. And they couldn't wake me up. I, was, I spent well, at least four or five days there. And then they, they let me go. Okay, so do you know why you hadn't been sleeping? I found out later, I think. And we went in, we, were, we moved into a uh, woman's school, uh, and they had dorm rooms and nice closets. Not as, oh no, that deep, just mm -hmm. a, a cot just right. fit in there real nice. But there was always a little draft coming down, mm -hmm. along with the mice and rats. <laughs> but because uh, I, I slept bef before I got there, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's what it was. I, I couldn't figure it out. I emptied my duffel bag, and put all, spread all the whatever out of the dish, and put the sleeping bag down. And then the overcoat and stuff, mm -hmm. the heavy stuff on the top. Couldn't sleep. Didn't have nerve, nerve enough to get dressed and go, go sit by the, the stove. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to go sleep. Well, I still run into that. <laughs> All right. Now, when you got back from the Swedish hospital, did you change how you slept, or did you do things differently, or could you sleep now? We moved. Okay. I, if no, nothing else, I went out into the main room there. Mm -hmm. So what did you, when you're, you're in Korea, what were you doing day by day? I mean, was it just going on duty and checking trains? I mean, how, what was a typical day like? It was 12 on, 12 off. Mm -hmm. Except every other weekend you were out. Sunday, it was 16, and 8 and 8. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Never got, never did much. Take a walk down to Pusan. No. I don't remember even playing cards. I must have been reading. Okay. Uh, now, what impression did you have of the Koreans themselves? Well, first of all, very sneaky. <laughs> got, into, <clears throat> got into a cigarette lighter, a little simple, put it right there. When it's light enough to see, where'd it go? <laughs> mm -hmm. They'd walk right in, you, you wouldn't hear them. But, uh, well, somewhere. 
they'd get you no. Mm -hmm. Well, did you work with any of them, or did you have them working on bases where you went, or? No, uh, the communication uh, was not there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> I don't really, really remember associating with them, mm -hmm. except once when they cut, cut our lines, uh, <clears throat> I got on their phone, I said, Masan or Tio Masan. GI. That's, that's as far as they had to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I talked to one of our guys and said, okay, thank you. Uh, there was nothing frictional mm -hmm. between the units that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily units. Uh, you, we had at each town, not at the designated towns. They had major stations mm -hmm. at uh, maybe 30, 35 miles apart. But there was other little stations between. And uh, in the beginning, the uh, front line may move just a little bit mm -hmm. and encompass another little town, a place where there might be a siding, and we'd operate that way. Okay. Now, in the time you're there, when you land in the middle of 1950, and the Americans and South Koreans have been pushed back to the area around Pusan and that perimeter. And then in September, they start pushing back out and going north, and well, MacArthur lands at Incheon. Before that. Well, there was kind of attacking, but most of the real larger scale movement starts at about the same time as the Incheon landing, at least in terms of. But, but, uh, but basically, regardless, after you got there, you, they, were, they did keep pushing forward, and so you were adding stations. Yeah. Okay. Now, eventually, though, when, the American the forward forces get well up into North Korea, and then they get chased back out again. Yeah. And the and the Chinese and North Koreans start coming back into South Korea. Now, did that ever affect your operations, or were you always far enough in the rear that you didn't notice? Well, I was in the seven fourteenth, and we <clears throat> we controlled the tracks up to Daejeon, mm -hmm. which was. Still going away from Seoul. Right. And uh, 712 took over up there. Mm -hmm. uh, we did run a. We, we ran a. Kept, we kept up to the front mm -hmm. until they moved into another territory. Right. <clears throat> but. Well, well, I was just asking if you were your operations were affected by uh, the communist counterattacks. No. Okay. So yeah, so you you didn't have to suddenly move south or anything like that. No, we were aware of it, but uh, because of the evacuation, with running on the trains. Okay. Uh, how much contact or communication did you have with people back home? Very little. Very little. And would it just be it was, letters? Just or? with my mother. Mm -hmm. And that was occasional. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and did the military provide anything to entertain you with? I mean, did they, were there movie theaters on bases that you could go to, or were you just in these small groups, so you had yeah. nothing? Uh, we didn't have that privilege that I recall. Mm -hmm. now, it was a mess hall that everybody spent time in, uh, in the Korean, uh, in the uh, Korean hotel. Mm -hmm. The uh, breakfast menu was open around the clock. So I had four, at least four meals a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. And was this all standard U.S. Army food? 
<laughs> yes. Okay. So, did you ever get a chance to sample any Korean food? I was not interested. Okay. In that. All right. Uh, now, did you get uh, any leave time or R and R or anything like that? R and R. Okay. And where did you go for that? Japan. Okay. And what was that like? Oh, great. Uh, got a whole week. And where did you go? Just uh, Tokyo. Okay. And I didn't do as much scurrying around as, as I should have. Mm -hmm. In hindsight, it's always great. <laughs> right. How did the Japanese people seem to view Americans or treat them? Oh, they were great. Yeah. And was it easy to get around Tokyo? Could you find your way around? Well, I didn't do much of that either. You know? Okay. <laughs> I kind of relaxed, mm -hmm. although, you know, that was probably a misnomer because it was, this, this was designed for the, the troops, mm -hmm. but uh, that was, Next question. Okay, that was just a nice, nice, nice break from being being in, in Korea. Okay, uh, now when you went to Korea, did you have an understanding of how long you were going to be there? No. Okay. Uh, how long did you wind up staying there? Uh, eight months. Uh, eight months extended. Okay. All right. Uh, typical was seventeen months. Because they had, during the Korean War, they did get to a point where a lot of combat troops would be in for probably not more than 12. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. But you were, because you were in a support unit, then mm -hmm. you might potentially stay longer. But in this case, you stayed a shorter period of time. Okay. Now, when you think about the time you spent uh, in Korea, I mean, I guess, are there other memories or impressions that you've got that you haven't brought into the picture yet? No, but uh, <clears throat> backing up to uh, Busan, mm -hmm. I was there probably a week, and uh, <clears throat> somebody relayed information and said, we've got a car of ambulatory down there, guys might need help. Mm -hmm. They happened to visit my outfit from Oakland. Oh. They recognized me being a mail clerk. And they were not clean in class A uniform. <laughs> so I was only one that, you know, after you, when they told you your, their name, mm -hmm. then you, you could relate. But, uh, now, were they a combat unit? No. Okay. No. That's where. Well, that was. The the, that was the problem that. When the war broke out, they shipped everybody then over there. Right. They, everybody had, had a rifle or anything since basic. Most of, most of them are, are like desk jobs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, put okay. them in the middle midst of a right. aggression. Because they had to fill out the ranks of the combat units they were sending over and they scraped up whatever personnel they could find in Japan yeah. and on the West Coast and just sent them over. Yeah. Okay. So they've been put into combat units. Oh, yes. That's all that was left. Mm -hmm. was, and, uh, but uh, the bulk to start with were from, were from Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I, I'm not directly related to their functions mm -hmm. well in Japan, but uh, I'm sure it's, it's like stateside. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, because the unit you were with, I mean, you were supposed to be repairing PT boats, or that was the original idea. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay, so you kind of got lucky there. Well, I've been lucky all the way. All right. Uh, now, how did you uh, find out when you were going home? Uh, 
Well, probably by order. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, were you kind of going home by yourself, or was the whole unit going to go at the same time? You know, that, that whole area is misty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. Okay. So when you went back home, did you go on another, on another ship? Did you go by sea to get back to the States? Yeah. Okay. And do you remember anything about that voyage? Well, one... One big part was going under the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. I expected an uproar. You could hear a pin drop. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Do you remember if men from your, your unit were sailing home with you? I mean, were men from your unit sailing home with you? Yes. Okay. There were there not very many men to start with. Okay, yeah, about how large was your battalion? Well, very small. At most, two men or four, if it was. Well, that's not a battalion. That's would be a peak. That's per station. Right. And well, you can build on. You had uh, like I. I had that little map. I could. We, we only went up as far as Tejan. Right. It's Tejan and Tegu and. Mm -hmm. Uh, once I re recall, but uh, so if you had all, told. so if you had all the battalion together, would you have a hundred men or uh, no. sixty or eighty or? Say a neighborhood of thirty. Okay. Yeah. So that is a very small unit. But uh, they didn't all. They, we had replacements, mm -hmm. and so the original uh, was over, and I think it was uh, probably fifteen, twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, when you got back to the states, um, did you still have time left on your enlistment? No. Okay. I was extended. Okay, you've been extended just to stay in Korea as long as you were. All right. Uh, so then, I guess on your record here, you indicate you're actually discharged in um, the end of March 1952. Is that when you got back to the States, or did you get back a little earlier than that? And this is how long the processing took? Well, processing was quite long. Okay. All right. And then, so were you actually discharged in California, or did they send you back to a base in the Midwest to discharge you? Or? I was discharged in uh, uh, Michigan. Fort okay. Uh, Fort Custer? Or? Custer. Okay. All uh, right. Coming back, we landed in uh, Presidio of San Francisco. Right. Okay. Uh, now, once you get back home, Okay, you're out of the army. Um, now what do you do? I did nothing for maybe a week. Mm -hmm. My neighbor approached my mother and says, I don't know, to the fact that it's Jim looking for work. Mm -hmm. And she, she came and Ask me, and I, said, <laughs> I went to the next door, gave me a, an appointment, and interview, 
and a job. Took about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And what kind of job was it? Drafting. Okay. Uh, had you had training for that? I did it in school. Okay. And did this lead to a career of some kind, or did you try different things? I stayed on that for uh, six, seven years. And uh, somebody came, uh, uh, the leader of the uh, instrument department came over and he says, got an offer. <laughs> he says, would you be interested in joining our group, which was five guys. And uh, he said, he said uh, you'd, you'd be trading and learning and maybe go to school and you could go back whenever you want to. I did all that in the state. Mm -hmm. Until I retired. All right. Now, uh, to look back at the time that you spent in the military, uh, do you think that that affected you at all, or did you learn anything from it? No, I learned things that I didn't want to. Uh, idleness. Even when, even overseas, when you're you're, you're working, but uh, the only real activity is is if you get an income and go, mm -hmm. or you have to call somebody else, and it's not happy, right. happening that fast. You, know, you, you you can't get worn out. Maybe mentally, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no in rush. Okay, so you decided you didn't like that. Well, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I learned to like it. It was a bad habit then. Okay, yeah. um, but otherwise, you don't really figure that. In a way, just being in the army was kind of just another job. Well, yes, it's, uh, I raised my right hand. <laughs> There you were. So I belong to you. All right. All right. Well, it, it, it gave you setting employment anyway for several years when you were looking for it. All right. Um, in that case, uh, I guess I'll close this out now and just say thank you very much for coming in and sharing the story. Oh, you got I something else? I, I already mentioned it. Okay. okay. All right. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.